for money, money shit. Doing something unholy. What is she doing? Not praying. Hi. Hi. I'm Christy. And I'm Julia. And this is going to be our last episode on the Mindfuck series for On Her Bookshelf. Because it's the last book in the series, so. <laughs> Excuse me on the end of the I was just like, are you breaking up with me? <laughs> Why would I? I have so much fun doing this. <laughs> but yeah, five books in the series. This is going to be our fifth episode. This is Paint It Red. Here we go. Logan. Uh, oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> I just remembered, like, book four ended with obviously... Logan being like, no, don't talk, Lana, you're Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> and then this book started with, goes to Hadley first, doesn't let Hadley talk, goes to Leonard, and Leonard is the one that shows Logan the files. And one thing that, Le that Jake obviously wasldn't able to change was the, the, pa the paper trail. Yeah, the paper trail which showed Kennedy's eye colour and Lana's eye colour. Mm. And as soon as Logan was looking at Lana's picture, which was Victoria's at the time, saw her eyes mm. and realised that he just left Lana. Lana, the victim of so much silencing, brutal rape, tied up naked to a bed, and realize he fucking fucked up. Yeah. He fucked up something vicious. Yeah. So he goes to Jake. Jake tells Logan everything that he needs to know. Jake is still at the, I'm not telling you everything. You, there are still things that you need to figure out for yourself, which was the whole part of Lana and Jake's plan from the beginning. They, they knew that they couldn't just approach someone and be like, this happened 10 years ago because no one would do anything or yeah. justice wouldn't be sought out the correct way. They had to figure it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. Obviously reveals that he can actually walk yeah. and <laughs> manages to outsmart Logan and get away. Yeah. Which was cool. It was actually real badass. Oh, I'm just reading my notes and going, oh yeah. Where are you going? Logan doesn't tell the team. Yeah. So Logan obviously figures out that Lana is the murderer that they've been chasing from the beginning, that he's obviously been dating her. Obviously, Leonard knows, and Hadley knows, and now Logan knows, and Logan keeps the information to himself. Yep. So, as the team is still investigating, Lana plans to kill Murdoch. She's on a spree. She's pissed after what happened like she's heartbroken she needs to just focus on killing she needs <laughs> she needs a distraction she's just full of rage <laughs> you literally don't mess with a woman's rage mm -mm. a woman scorned mm -mm. but also there's so many names of this logan was essentially keeping lana sane Logan's relationship with Lana and Lana finding someone that could actually show her love mm. was keeping Lana from going over the edge. Yeah. He was her anchor. But anyway, so Lana plans to kill Murdoch. He's one of the cops that killed her dad. Uh, so she does that. <laughs> she kills him. Look, it's brutal. There's so it's much so murder much, like, yeah. this day. Just like, all right, she's checked so off. desensitized. By she's this checked point. off another person on the list. Robert Evans, Lana's father, had been sleeping with Carl's mum, um, and she had provided the DNA to the police so they could frame him for the original murders. And then we find out <laughs> that Jake and Hadley fuck. <laughs> Literally, my notes just skipped over all of that and went from 
oh my god, Logan knows and realizes he fucked up too. Jake and Ellie are fucking. <laughs> Did not see that coming at all. That was brilliant and I'm so glad it happened. How could you not see that? Okay, you know um, what? No, it because wasn't, okay, it wasn't in any of why. my predictions. It's because Jake was Jake's an IT person and Hadley's an IT person. Yeah, but Jake was in love with Marcus. I assume it's true. I, I assume you assumed that he was just gay and not bi. Yeah, and Hadley didn't give off that she slept with men. Like I thought she might have been lesbian. That, that's that's true. I'm pretty sure it was played out that. Hadley was like, I prefer girls. Yeah. So I did not see that coming at all. Mm, okay, I'll agree. Yeah, that's right. I th it just seems so obvious when you look back, though. Oh, yes, that's right. So she runs into the woods. <laughs> but, and I've got here, Logan takes her by surprise in the forest. And then they end up spending the night together. Yeah. Yeah, and they pretend like nothing's happening, but it's just them. And um, that's when he tells her to run away with him, give it all up. That's right. Just stop now. Don't go for after your end game. Like, run away with me. I'll run away with you. Which was it was really sweet. Yeah. And she refuses. Logan's team begins getting like pulled away from the town and there's nothing more that they can do at this point because uh, it's an order that's come from like a higher, higher, higher up. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where like the end game really starts playing out because Jake has taken over the broadcasting mm -hmm. for the, the broadcasting station for the town. And it's fucked up. It plays clips from the night that her and Marcus were raped and her father getting beaten. And she, they start leaving messages around the town as well. But it's essentially forcing the townsfolk to choose sides. Mm. Either you can stay in and this die. town. Mm hmm or Run. leave stay or or leave um play the clips on uh like the radio like the frequency of lana's mom singing in the choir oh that's right as well so yeah not only are, you, are the townsfolk being forced to listen to audio of these two children getting raped and of lana's dad being murdered but then it's like this beautifully haunting song from Lana's mum in the in the Christmas choir. Yeah. And everybody in that town was familiar with the song because they were all in attendance that year. Yeah. It was like the year before she died or something like yeah. that. And yeah, Logan's obviously heard all of this as well and essentially he just wants everybody in the town to, to die for just standing by and doing nothing while these children and this whole family suffered. Uh, she's just kind of <laughs> That's right. She starts to live out just serial killer fantasies now because the way that she, the way that she kills the step sheriff, she essentially tells him, go stand in the bathtub, you know? Like, she stabs him through the shower curtain. <laughs> like psycho. Yeah. I and, love that. Um, and then shoots him with his own gun while I shot the sheriff was playing in the background. I shot the sheriff. Like, this girl is well aware that she is a serial killer murderer and she's just fucking leaning all into it yeah. now i loved it i loved it so much oh yeah all i wrote down was my anxiety in all caps yeah what whatever happened next clearly i didn't write anything down because my anxiety was just peaked through the roof yeah i don't have much written down because i was the same just i was speed reading like, literally like what's gonna happen next oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> um so but look like that's a compliment to the author because yeah. that's how into this story we yeah. were all the sheriffs ended up in the town hall. Essentially, anybody who was still left alive that Lana hadn't gotten to, but was somehow involved in not only covering up and framing her dad, but also not investigating further into what happened to her and her brother, 
ended up in this town hall. And Hadley and Logan were back at their headquarters and Jake ends up sending Hadley a feed, a video feed from the town that he was watching, which included like video footage of like the street leading up to Town Hall and then video footage inside Town Hall, which showed all the sheriffs. And so fucking sick. But <laughs> Lana is like decked out in weapons, has a mask on, and she keeps this mask on while she's standing out in like broad daylight um, to keep like her identity still concealed. And as she's walking towards Town Hall, Jake has gone, oh yeah, I've got you some theme music yeah. <laughs> for, for this moment. And what song starts playing over the speakers? Down with the sickness. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, oh, so sick. I'm like, I'm such a fan of that song. Same. And honestly, as I'm reading this scene, like all I can hear in my head yes. is just the just vocals. Oh, just... So good. And this, this scene just had me like fucking on the edge of my seat. I... This was one of those scenes where I couldn't predict how it was going to end. It's just, this ruined me. It ruined, like, where I was up to. Okay, Jake and Lana have tricked all the guilty deputies into Town Hall. Massive shootout. Like, at this stage, like, you kind of believe, like, Lana is this badass girl who has proved time and time again that she is more than capable to do what she sets out to do. But like this gunfight is like it's She's going in there to die. Yeah, and Jake and Lana obviously had this plan to get Lana out of there, but Lana ends up getting shot in the leg and like shot in the shoulder. She's injured, she's pinned down. It's she's taken on more than she can chew. And Go on without me. Jake essentially realizes that yeah, she's she's gone in there to die. Like yes, they had this plan to get her out, but Lana was aware that those chances of her getting out of there alive were so slim. So when things are looking seriously grim, oh, because what it is as well is Jake and Lana have also rigged Town Hall to explode. Yeah. Town Hall is on a timer. And the basement is like full of like dynamite or bombs or something like that. So with Lana being injured and obviously unable to get out of there, Jake patches, Lana asks Jake to like patch her through to Logan so that she can say her goodbyes. Mm -hmm. And Logan and Hadley are watching everything from their end. Like, Jake set it up so, like, they're sitting in, like, the FBI offices and Hadley and Logan are, are just watching everything unfold. And, like, Logan's like, you just gotta get out of there. You gotta get out of there and yeah, like, she, she can't. Me. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. And it's so well written that you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if Lana is actually by some miracle going to get out or if you're reading a book where the main character dies. Yeah, you just don't know. It ends with you not knowing. Yeah, and it's just like Town Hall explodes. Logan's obviously heartbroken. Yeah, and just watch the love of his life die. And then, like, the next chapter is several months later. Yeah. Told from Logan's perspective. Yeah. So, three months later, uh, Logan figures out who the original killer was. He quits the FBI. He... Well, that's... 
that's right, because he actually confronts his boss with all of this evidence that points to who exactly the original killer is. Yeah. But it, he doesn't listen. Doesn't want a bar of it. Yeah, it's just tells it, politics. Tells him, you know, it's your first day back after all this leave. Yeah. Um, why are you trying to, like, dredge this stuff up? This case is closed. Yeah, there's nothing more we can do. So he quits he quits he goes to the killer's house we don't know who it is at this point <laughs> he finds a note on the front door um from what he assumes is lana it doesn't say it's from lana just saying it's too late for him thinking logan wants to save him like she's thinking you know logan still this has that hero complex he needs to go save this guy it's, it's, Christa Jake's dad. it's Christopher, Christopher Denver. Denver. <laughs> it's Jake's dad. It's Jake's dad. The original killer was Jake's dad. What? That <laughs> honestly that's, caught me by surprise. That sent me. But as soon as it said that, I was like, it made sense. It all clicked into place. I was like, mm, okay. actually. <laughs> but then, like, obviously, it goes into detail on how Logan figured out it was him. Mm hmm. Um, and we find out that Jake's dad had been in love with Lana's mum. Uh, she, they had dated in high school before she had married Robert. Um, and she had essentially left him for Robert. So... And that's right, because Jake's dad being a lawyer thought Robert was beneath him. Yeah, like he would leave me for a janitor. Ugh. Um, so Christopher being, I don't know, psychopath, killed any girl who looked like Lana's mum as like a revenge. Up. He was fucking weird. Um, so then Logan shoots Chris in the dick to prove his loyalty and go find his girl. Yeah, so as it turns out, Lana's alive. Yep. Yay. And after killing the last lame on her list, her and Jake essentially sailed to Greece. Like, they got on a boat, left, left America, went to Greece because that was, like, long-term goal and what she wanted to do with her life. Um, she wanted to go with Logan. That she was, did want to go with Logan, but that honestly. That was the thing that they were going to do. Like, run away with, like, back in book four. It was like, run away with me, we'll just go to Greece. They ended up adopting a cat sometime in the yeah. last few months, and Lana called it Bennett. Yes, <laughs> After Logan. I loved that so much. It was much. sweet. Um, and yeah, Logan and Hadley end up tracking down Lana and Jake, mm -hmm. who by this stage had now changed names, mm -hmm. and they were they changed their last names to other. Um, like killers. serial killer or horror movie like famous surnames they end up using things like vlad and vuhiz and white there was one more but that i can't remember um lana and logan ended up getting married after two months mm -hmm. in greece and jake and hadley got married two years later mm -hmm. jake and hadley rotate between picking who like chooses, yeah. who's going to be the next person to kind of it. like come into the bedroom with them and i just think it's beautiful like yeah. it's so nice to just read about like an open relationship like that and they're both happy yeah. spicing it up with extra people and like take it in turns and like who's going to be the next one to pick yeah. it's it's like trying to rotate between okay but it's your choice for movie night now <laughs> <laughs> wow but, okay, and, um, but the thing is, Lana still has serial killer tendencies, and it's like she's got this murderous itch that she still needs to scratch, so every year on Logan and Lana's anniversary, um, <laughs> Logan essentially finds her someone that she can murder, mm -hmm. And they take the boat, take their victim out onto, like, the open sea and murder somebody. And it sounds fucked up, but as it turns out, well, for how the book ends, it is... Leonard? I have to say not Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard caught wind of this person who's essentially, like, breaking the law, 
abusing women, fucked up, bad person all round. Lana was... Uh, Logan tracked him down for Lana, and Lana ended him. So romantic. <laughs> I wish my fiancé would do that for me. <laughs> but it was just like... That's so thoughtful. What a thoughtful gift. I don't know. Like, like look, the way, it, the way it ended, I thought it was perfect. Yeah. Because, like... He supports her. He supports her. He obviously left, like, the corrupt, like, bureau that he worked in. They're both still able to seek out some form of justice in their own, like, sick and twisted ways. Um, and it didn't end in pregnancy trope. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it made the book so much more perfect. No. No pregnancy trope. I don't need it. Mm-mm. I even, like, like, obviously they got married, and I think that's, like, a real cliche thing as well to kind of, like, end romances for, like, a happily ever after. But, you know, it even still felt right. Like, they got married after two months, but then, like, Hadley and Jake dated for two years hmm. before they got married. So, I don't know. It was a nice ending. It was a nice yeah, ending to the It wasn't book. a forced ending. That's what it was. It was... It was a perfect ending. I don't know. I read so many books where things feel forced to have, like, a perfectly wrapped up ending with, like, a little bow on top. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of shitty that justice couldn't have been sought out within the law for Lana's dad mm -hmm. and obviously Jake's dad. Mm -hmm. But it felt nice in that it wasn't perfect. Yeah. Do you know... Do you, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it was more human. Yeah. I think that kind of helped make the book feel just a little bit more real because... Mm. It packed a punch. Yeah. And it... Yeah, look. This book made you think on, like, so many different topics and so many different levels. Mm. But, like, it's a book that I am 100% going to reread again. Oh, heck yeah. I just loved, like every single minute of reading it and each book was only like 100 to maybe maximum 150 kind of pages yeah it so, wasn't it wasn't hard to read i read all five in four days yeah, i, I could have easily same. read all five in a day mm. but i think with how the author had obviously ended each book it forced you to pause it yeah, kind of forced reflect. you to have a bit of a breath between picking up one book and the next. Mm. So much happens. Five out of five. Ugh. Hands down. And it's and five. it's just like, yes, there's spice and there is like sex scenes which they're not closed door romances. But like you don't you don't need it. Yeah. For this for this book. Like no. it's just that little something extra that makes you appreciate Logan and Lana's relationship. Yeah. I, I love this book. I love it too. I want to read it again. I know. It just, it sets up a high standard for books. I've <laughs> DNF'd so many recently since reading this because they just don't hold a candle, but hold a flame to I it. I think it's also made us appreciate, like, what's the word I'm looking at? Psychological thrillers? Mm. Or, like, not even, mm. like, not true crime, but, like, false, just fictional crime? crime? Crime books, I guess. That's weird. It makes us appreciate crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, for Christy and I, like, we've obviously been on romance. We've on the, been on the real smutty stuff. We've been on the fantasy. fantasy. The, like, monster smut. Like, it had just been a while since we've really read, like, fiction. Hmm. I, I would deem this as, like, a psychological thriller. About psychological. No, I don't know. It's it's a crime. It's just a thriller. It's, it's just a really thriller, good book. Maybe. It's, it's not really scary. Book. It's not scary. But a psychological thriller doesn't have to be scary. It's just psychological. I don't know what else to say. Read it. Yeah, read it. <laughs> read it. Look, if you've gotten to. Whatever episode this is. 
Good on you. We've spoiled the whole book series for you now, but read it. Read it. Seriously. And if you have read it, go back and read it again. Because it deserves yeah. it. And come talk to us about You know it. what? I would actually... Look, I know I said I am going to read this book again, but I would love to go back to the beginning after knowing what I know now. Yeah, there was so many clues now that you looked back. So many little clues. I'm like, how did I not see that? I'm so dumb. Mm. But then I caught on to a lot of things as well, so I'm actually very smart. So. But yeah, if you enjoyed us deep diving into the Mindfuck series, it's definitely something we'd be interested in doing for other book series in the future. I don't know. Any feedback is welcome. Um, our DMs are always open, whether it's you reach out to us on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or even literally on Spotify. We do have like Q&A sections um yeah any feedbacks welcome whether that be good or bad but no if it's bad i'll probably cry yeah <laughs> so you can feel bad about that you know what my mom said that if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all well your mom is a smart woman it makes me feel like 12 saying that again though <laughs> thanks for listening <laughs> thanks i guess we'll see you next week bye bye, bye. <laughs>